everyone, my name is Katie Robertson. I am the founder and director for the Anchor Gathering, and I want to officially welcome you to our very first Anchor at Home of the season. We are so glad you're tuning in. If you're in a watch party with family and friends, or you're watching on your own, we are so thankful you're joining us tonight. We have got a great evening planned and season. We want to remind you that the Anchor at Home premieres on our YouTube channel the first Thursday of every month through June at our usual time, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And we'd love for you to join us. We are dreaming big and we loved your help in getting the word out. We wanna spread the good news of Jesus and the grace and peace he brings to women everywhere. So if you haven't already, we'd love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, share this very link with your friends, family, anyone in the need of hope, and consider hosting a watch party. Now, speaking of watch parties, we are going to take a minute and hear from a special guest correspondent all the way from the East Coast. Her name is Paula, and some of you have met Paula recently at our Anchor Day Getaway Retreat here in Gig Harbor, Washington, and we are looking forward to introducing you all to her. She's got some exciting and fun information and news to share with us. So let's now go to Paula. Eyewitness News, where news comes first. We're here. Is it big? Is it big? Are we on? Are we on? We're good? Oh. All right. Hello. Hey, ladies. Oh, my gosh. Paula here. Okay, can you believe this? I am, I am on location far away. Okay, I'm on the East Coast, all right? And I'm so excited to be here with you guys because I just heard, I remember I, I came to the event in, in that little Nantucket Inn in Gig Harbor, and I, I heard all about it, and then I talked to Katie. She sent me this mug. She likes anchors, you guys. There's anchors like everywhere, okay? So I asked her, I said, how do I do this? Like, how do I bring my friends? I mean, we love coffee, we like Jesus. We'll, we'll talk about God, that's kind of fun. I mean, I got hot in here, okay? And so I asked her and she said, she said, Paula, you just, you go to the anchorgathering.com, this website that she's got, okay? And you just sign up, oh my gosh. And my friend is calling right now. She's coming tonight, hold on, hold on. She's got a call later. She doesn't know that I'm doing this right now. I mean, I'm kind of a star, you know? And, um, and so anyway, so tonight we are gathering in my home. And some of you are like, I'm not a hostess. It doesn't even matter. You just put out some popcorn, a little coffee, a little chocolate. Do you know what I like? I like those tiny little hot dogs. The ones with the puff pastry, you know, the like pastry pups or something. That's so delicious. And a little mustard. Yeah. Anyway, anyway so you just get the snacks. You, you gather the people. You laugh together. You just turn on the YouTube, you know? And then you just watch the thing. And these ladies, they share from the heart, you know? That it just so inspiring and then and then you chat with your girls you know it's so fun and you just chat about things of the heart you know like in here some people think this is the valley of the shadow of death no no I got a heart in here okay and I want to talk about things of the heart okay and so this is what we're gonna do we're not just gonna get our nails done no we're gonna go deep okay ladies it's gonna be so much fun so you get your coffee you get your treats you go on anchorgathering.com and you sign up to host your ladies okay and then we just do this thing together I'm so excited all around the world this is happening all around the world tonight every Thursday no it's not every Thursday it's like once a month or something you got to go to the website you got to figure it out okay see you later Paula, that is awesome news. We always love to hear from you. We like to start every Anchor at Home with music, and tonight we are so privileged to get to hear from one of our favorite groups for King & Country, all the way from Nashville, Tennessee, comprised of brothers Luke and Joel Smallbone and their family. They are a top contemporary Christian group, and they have earned many awards. They have over a billion streams bringing the message with their lyrics of the hope found in Jesus Christ. So tonight, we welcome for King and Country. Well, we have a very uh, a distinct pleasure uh, for you right now. We have uh, about a little under two weeks ago, we released our first new song in about a year and a half, actually since the Burn the Ships record. And uh, it's been a song a long time in the making, very complicated, but we were actually in... Uh, Canada, right as uh, COVID-19 was hitting, it was our last show and Luke walked off the stage. We'd, we'd played the song live, but we obviously hadn't released it yet. And he said, this is the song for this time. And um, so we need to uh, kind of rush this out. And so we partnered with kind of the gospel godfather, if you will, uh, Kirk Franklin and uh, a friend and a wonderful vocalist, Tori Kelly. Um, and uh, two, not one, but two gospel choirs uh, obviously, we don't have them with us today, so you're going to have to make do <laughs> with just us. Uh, but this is a song about when we're separated physically, um, celebrating how we can and will 
um, come together. This is for the busting hearts This is for the question marks This is for the outcast so lost control No one knows Single for the can't go back Single for the broken bars Single for the just found out Life is now upside down If you're looking for hope tonight Raise your head Together we are bolder, braver, stronger. Thank you again for King and Country. Love the title of that song, Together. That is the theme for the Anchor at Home. Gathering together in watch parties, in homes across the country, or on your own, virtually together, we're spreading the good news of Jesus and the hope he brings. Well, at this time, we have the Anchor Moment, and it really is one of my very favorite times of the Anchor at Home. The Anchor Moment's a time we get to hear from a special guest a little bit about their life, about their faith journey, and about an Anchor Moment. And an Anchor Moment is a time that your faith has been grounded, where you've really seen Jesus to be real in your life. He's been your anchor. So, it's our tradition for the first Anchor at Home of the season to get to hear from one of our board members. And tonight, we have the honor of hearing from a dear friend of mine. Her name is Carla Vale, and Carla has been on our board now for a few years, and she is really the one behind our branding and marketing, editing, and so much more. So thankful for all she does for the anchor. So welcome, Carla, into our home here in Gig Harbor, yeah. Washington. Uh, we better just get started with all our right. first question. Okay. How about, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm not native to the Pacific Northwest. I grew up in Southern California. I am currently an empty nester and I have my own interiors business and I love um, all of the work that I do with the Anchor and all of the amazing women that I've met. Awesome. How about, tell us a little bit about your faith journey. 
I feel really fortunate that I was raised in a Christian household. So I grew up um, going to church. I go to a different type of church now than I did when I was growing up, but I really grew up with the fundamentals of the Christian faith. And so that's really been something that's been woven through my adult life during college and following college. I did a lot of exploring to learn whether I was um, a Christian kind of by osmosis or if this was a personal choice I made for myself. And I really rededicated myself to the faith after um, really discovering that this is truly at core who I am. Very cool. Um, and so now we'd like to hear about one of your, an anchor moment that you've had in your life. Yeah, I would love to share this story. Um, I've told quite a few people about this. This is one of those times where I really felt like my creator was really present in every moment. So I um, Two minute backstory, a very, very, very dear friend of mine lost her husband in a ski accident. And following that really turbulent time in her household, her son, who was an only child, um, really kind of his life took a little bit of a wrong direction. And there came a time where um, she made the decision that he was going to have to go away to a um, boarding school. And the boarding school was in another state. And so she and I um, had arranged for a transport company to come to her house um, in the middle of the night to actually um, pick up her son, who was not aware that he was going to be leaving, to go away to um, finish high school at this boarding school, which is out of state. And I really learned a lot about how that whole process works. Um, it was a really... Um, really somber and scary time. But for me, now that I can tell this story without crying, um, for me, where I really saw God in this moment was she and I had really, along with a big group of women really, um, had been praying up this day that was coming. We knew we only had a few days notice because you have to have an opening in the school for the child to go and then you have to arrange for the extraction team that comes to the home. She and I were the only ones in the home with her son. They come in the middle of the night so that um, the child is surprised and they're usually asleep so they're um, not expecting it. At about 1 a.m. she and I were praying and we were praying over every single detail of this night that, that God would just protect her son and protect her heart and protect the whole situation. We prayed over the smallest details, Katie. You know how we always say God wants to help in the details, but then we feel like we have to pray about big issues and not small issues. We were literally praying for every tiny detail of this night down to that, you know, the car would start perfectly and the dogs wouldn't bark and every tiny thing. So um, when it came time for the team to come in, and I will tell you, you and I are not large people. You'll never feel smaller than when two people on an extraction team come into your house. These two huge men came in and we introduced ourselves to them. They had been, again, really well vetted by my friend, but we hadn't met them in person. And we had everything lined up. And as soon as they got there, I had to get the two dogs in the car so they wouldn't bark. And the car was in the driveway because we were supposed to leave after she introduced her son to them. And we were gonna pull away because we were not supposed to be there when they walked out of the house so that there's no cajoling on the part of the child. It's less traumatic for the parent if the child is struggling. We had it all planned. Well, we had prayed for the every detail. And we. Um, I went out to the car after she went upstairs. She rehearsed what she was going to say. I'm in the car with the car running. She comes out. I turn my head back. Their giant SUV, which looked like what the president arrives in, had blocked the driveway. And there was no way to get the car out. I couldn't have gotten around it without, there wasn't even driving over the lawn. There was no way to get around. And we were both panicked in that moment because we had prayed that everything would go perfectly and what were we gonna do? Now her son was gonna walk out the door and he would see us in the car and that would be terrible. And um, the really amazing thing is that when they walked out the door with him, he was very calm and we both had expected that he would be fighting it and panicking and he was very calm as he walked out and she we had put her down under a blanket so he wouldn't see her and, and want to talk to her oh and he gosh. walked out and he and i caught eyes 
and then he continued to get in the truck and we both were amazed that he went so quietly. And it turned out later when he was, he had earned the privilege to write home, he wrote a letter and said, you know, I, I know you introduced me, I was confused, I had just woken up, he was actually under the influence at the time, which we didn't find out till later. And he said, when I saw Carla in that car, I knew you wouldn't have, or she wouldn't have let someone take me if it wasn't safe. And that's why I felt it was okay to get in the truck and leave. And if that SUV hadn't been parking the driveway, we would have driven and been all the way around the corner and not there. So to me, that's one of those moments, Katie, where you pray for everything to go a certain way and God's way is a different way. Well, so tell us, how did it turn out for him? So that's actually also really a God story, Katie, because he was um, out of state in the school for 15 months. He graduated high school while he was there and he was just recently accepted on a scholarship to Seattle University and he wow. has been clean um, for, um, I think it's three years in August now, yeah. Well, I just love this story and just that little detail yeah. of seeing you in the driveway in the car yeah oh. was that little mm -hmm. moment for him of okay he can trust what's going on but that god ordained that is pretty amazing well now it's time for our drawing and every anchor at home we like to have a drawing for these beautiful glassy babies known in the northwest here they are hand-blown glass votives and this one for this month is white it's named hope it comes etched with our anchor logo and enclosed inside is our anchor verse, Hebrews 6:19. We have this hope, Jesus as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. Now there's three ways you can sign up for this drawing. You can go to our website, theanchorgathering.com. You can go to our QR code, which your watch party host will have, or you can find it in the watch party kit. And the third way is to go to our description box on our YouTube channel. So three ways you can get your name in there. We hope you do. You've got until nine o'clock tonight and tomorrow morning we will announce our winner. So good luck to you all. We hope to see your names. Well, at this time at the Anchor at Home, we get to hear a special message from a guest speaker. And tonight we are so privileged to get to hear from Sarah Hasselbeck. Sarah lives in Boston with her husband, Matt Hasselbeck, former NFL quarterback. They have three children, two daughters and a son. And Sarah is an active member on the Medical Teams International Board. She has a passion and desire to serve and to share about her faith in Jesus in so many ways. So we're so grateful to have her with us tonight. Let's now hear from Sarah. Hello Anchor Gatherings, my name is Sarah Hasselback, and although I'm speaking to you from Boston, Massachusetts, my heart is in the Pacific Northwest. I cheered as a 12 fan for the 10 years my husband Matthew played for the Seattle Seahawks, and I'm here today to be your cheerleader for God the Father and His Son Jesus Christ because of the people God faithfully and intentionally put into my life during those 10 years in Seattle. Jim and Joy Zorn, Chuck and Barb Snyder, Norm and Bobby Evans, Jeff and Stacy Kemp, the women of BSF, the moms of Bellevue Christian School, Heather and Dwayne Baker, Sarah Dowd, Diane Waynehouse, Rhonda Brown, Carl Payne, Annette Patterson, Jen Lindmark, and all my Seahawk Wive teammates, I couldn't possibly list, list them all, but some women like Deanna Ingram and Cass Dilfer, Julie Gray, Zoe Strong, Kristen Brown, Sonny Weiner, Molly Heward, Rachel Terrell, Daniel Carlson, Ashley Herring, Atoya Burleson, Janelle Bryant, Jamila Curry, Catherine Spencer, all taught me something, all attracted me to the Lord. And the 26-year-old girl that arrived in Seattle would never have dreamed that speaking about Jesus would be a passion of her heart. Now being a cheerleader, that was a passion of my heart. And my very first Seahawk experience was walking into Cheney training camp with two other Seahawk wives I had really just met and we were stopped and asked if we were the sea, sea gals just arriving. And these other two wives were kind of offended. They were college basketball players. And I was so happy. It made my day. It was the best first Seahawk experience to be thought that I was one of the sea gals. And when my husband would go away on away trips, sometimes I'd ask him about the game. But first I would ask him, you know, did the cheerleaders change costumes at halftime? Did you notice the Kansas City Chiefs? So they were wearing all this fringe. And he'd look at me, not sure how to answer, and be like, is this a trick question? 
So then fast forward a few years, we'd been on the Seahawks. I get this letter in the mail and it's on Seahawk letterhead and says, Dear Sarah, you've been invited to try out for the Seagulls. You've made it past the first round. You just need to show up in a crop top and have a two minute exercise dance routine prepared. And I was so excited. I said to myself, like, I'm totally going to do this. I hid that letter in one of the kitchen cabinets and I started preparing for what I was my, what my dance number was going to be. Well, come to find out, it was just a joke my husband was playing on me, and I never did actually end up becoming an NFL cheerleader. But you're probably asking, so why is she telling us all these things? Because when you think back to who spoke at this first anchor gathering, you may not remember anything I said, but the, you may associate it with the word cheerleader, and that will make me happy. Mission accomplished. Now, I actually would consider myself a professional cheerleader because my husband played in the NFL for 18 years and I'm a mom to three athletes. So that's what I'm here, like I said earlier, to do today. I'm here to encourage you for your meetings ahead, to fire you up for your time spent with the Lord. And the verse for this season is a cheerleading verse. It comes from 2 Peter. Grace and peace to you in abundance through the knowledge of God in Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace to you in abundance through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. Peter, the speaker of that verse, is a follower of Jesus who is passionate for what he knows is available to all people if they, if they put their faith and trust in the risen Jesus. And I trust Peter in this. I trust Peter that he knows what grace and peace are. Peter experienced God's grace when he was forgiven and loved, even though he completely abandoned and denied Christ in Christ's darkest hour. Christ made Peter the rock of his church, the cornerstone, Christ gave Peter power and favor. Christ gave Peter grace. I know that Christ gave Peter peace as well. Peter experienced God's peace when he was able to actually walk on water. That had to be a supernatural feeling of incredible power. Now throw in the fact that there was a raging sea storm with waves and wind and rain, like being in a protected realm in the middle of chaos swirling around you. Peter saw and touched the risen, resurrected Jesus. His life was completely changed. His belief was anchored. He would be Jesus' number one cheerleader, and he would ultimately be put to death for this, be put to death because he was proclaiming Jesus as the Son of God. Here, Peter is cheering for us to have grace and peace in our lives, in abundance in our lives. He's saying, I want you to know the grace and peace that I know. Jesus is a Savior come to rescue you out of your sins and come to give you life and life to the full. I can speak of this peace that he is talking about, that he is a cheerleader for. When we want peace, or when the word peace actually means something to us, it's usually when something in our lives is not peaceful. There is some type of storm brewing or is currently raging. And it is something we cannot change ourselves, or we would. It is a peace we cannot manufacture up. The troubles of this world come fast and hard sometimes, and there are things that are out of our control, like cancer. A few years ago now, I accidentally found some tumors on my ovaries, when I was, went to an orthopedic appointment for some hip pain I was having. Now, ovarian cancer is hard to detect, and the doctors really aren't sure what it is unless they go in and check it out, which ultimately means carefully removing things to be safe. Based on my family history and a current family member that was going through ovarian cancer, and a radiologist who grabbed my hand and said, I think you need to find an oncologist, I think you have cancer, I was expecting it to be cancer. And there was this three week period of time from when I found the tumors to when I was gonna have them removed that all these thoughts and fears were flooding my brain on repeat and new realizations of what this would mean and what I would miss out on, how my kids would experience suffering. Those were crushing thoughts. But I remember this moment like it just happened and I was walking from my kitchen to the dining room which is the room I'm sitting in right now and I heard this voice inside of me it was not an audible voice, but it was a clear voice. And every other thought in my head left. And my mind was blank except for these words and this voice. And it said, your life is not your own. In that moment, peace came over me. It was an anchor moment in my life. The problem did not go away. The problem's circumstances did not change, but I felt like I was in a different realm. Like I was walking on water in a storm. I felt power. I felt control and I felt free. I felt a peace that made me feel happy. And God's will worked it out that I'm here today through that. I'm here to tell you I know what Jesus is saying when he says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. 
Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. I hadn't understood those verses before that moment. I mean, how could your life you're not, is not your own? Help me. It was essentially saying to me, Sarah, God's purposes and plans on this earth reign, not yours. If I was to die, it would be well and it would be good because it would be good for God's kingdom. And from that moment forward, I was okay with that. I was felt completely submitted to that. I had such a peace about accepting that truth and accepting God's sovereignty. The verses, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain, and I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave his life for me, were now real and concrete and understood by me. It was like a math problem being solved. One of those really long, hard, complicated math problems, that's what I'm talking about. And it makes me think of that movie, Good Will Hunting, set here in Boston. Now that movie depicts Boston so well. In that one liner from the movie, how about them apples? Do you like apples? Yeah. Well, I got a number. How do you like them apples? <laughs> That really captures the peace that I felt in that moment and how good it made me feel. But why I'm mentioning that movie, I'm talking about the math from that movie. It was the type of math that really took time. It took meditation, took practice for things to be solved. It took help from teachers and help from friends, from people who had gone before you and solved the problem. Now, some people get it right away, these deeper things of God. But for some like me, it took a lot of moments in my life. Over many years of spending time in my Bible, meditating on it, listening to sermons, going to Bible studies, being in community with other followers of Jesus. That's what it took for me to get that peace and what that peace meant at just the right moment. That is why I took the time to list all the people at the beginning of this talk. They helped me in my math problem. My life is not my own, problem solved. Those words now made sense and gave me peace. The deeper truths of God are so sweet and are so good. They are accessible to everyone to learn and to know in so many different ways. But you have to do some math work. Sit down at a desk and work out the problem. You need to choose to seek. And I'm here to be your cheerleader for coming to these anchor gatherings throughout the year. Show up. The peace you will need in your life is waiting for you. God is cheering louder than me. He's saying, choose me, follow me, hear me. I am the Lord, your God. Now, if there's anything greater than or equal to this peace I just share with you, it is grace. Grace gets me to say, let's go people. Let's go worship God. Let's sit under him. Let's follow his ways. Grace is unearned and unmerited favor and blessing in your life. Grace will knock you off your feet. Grace is help with and protection from only things God has power over. Grace is God's love lavished on his children. Now to play a game in the NFL is very hard. When you're healthy, it takes everything you got. When you're broken down, it takes God. So it was a Friday night before a home game. Matthew was playing for the Indianapolis Colts. We had ordered dinner out, but for some reason, um, Matthew had eaten my order instead of um, me, and that turned out to be his complete downfall. Fast forward to that Sunday. Our starter, Andrew Luck, goes down, and Matthew's called in to finish the game. Matthew finishes the game. It goes well, but he said that at some point during the fourth quarter, he just started not to feel feel great. He what, hadn't made it home, and I'm trying to find out where he is. I finally find him. He had pulled over on the side of the road. He was violently ill. Get him to the hospital that night. He spends that night and most of all of Monday, most of Tuesday in the hospital, having lots of miserable tests done. Come to find out he has a bacterial infection. Now it's Tuesday and the coach is saying to him, okay, Andrew's still hurt and you're gonna have to play. And this happens to be a short week, one of those short weeks in the NFL when you play on Thursday night. And we were playing the Houston Texans, our division rival that Thursday. And on the Houston Texans is a player named JJ Watt. Now, one of my kids had downloaded a picture of J.J. Watt and taped it to our bathroom door. So all week, we had just been staring at his face. 
And who is J.J. Watt? J.J. Watt was the number one defensive QB sacker in the league. Pressure. J.J. Watt, what a stud he is. He is, you know, the youngster out of Wisconsin. Now. And this is who my husband, who was at his weakest, was about to go play. Because in the NFL, if you're breathing, you're playing. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm not kidding, he was going to play. So now it's Wednesday morning. We're in the garage, and I'm st we're staring at each other. He has definitely lost a lot of weight. He is that gray, sallow color. He, he looks terrible. He, he is not even sure if he can get through warm-ups, let alone play in the game. And we just look at each other and we say, if, if you do this, if you play, this is God. It's going to take God for any of this to go down right now. So he leaves, and I watch him on TV. Out Indianapolis was confirmed. Matt Hasselbeck will be the starting quarterback this afternoon. And that night, I'm sitting outside on my front porch, just looking up at heavens in complete awe of God's goodness and favor and grace and kindness. Matthew played the whole game. Feet are all game. He curls in. The pass complete, though, to T.Y. Hilton, who has a first down. He wants a little bit more. He played great, and we won. It was, it was amazing. Off the play fake. Hasselbeck looking right. Throws as he's hit, and it's complete. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Kobe Fleeter. Now, it was amazing that he played and won, not because it was some big game or critical to our season. It was amazing because we both knew that Matthew was at his absolute weakest. And it just showed us what is so true in Scripture, that people that are at their weakest in Scripture, God uses, and God is strongest in them. And it was such an example of that to us. There is no doubt that on that field that night in Houston, God's grace was on full display for us. It has come to be like that Marvel movie Endgame, playing out for me when I think back to it now. So my son Henry and I enjoy watching the Marvel movies together. I love them. Now you may say you're not into sci-fi or action films, but these movies are just like the Hallmark Channel. It scares me a little bit. Well, being scared is a good sign. It means you're onto something. They're feel-good movies, they're love stories, trust me. So in Endgame, all is lost. The enemy has amassed a huge army and the Avenger group is looking weak and small and will no doubt be overpowered. Their defeat is all but assured. What happened? If you mess with time, it tends to mess back. You'll see. Then Captain America hears, on your left, Captain, and all of a sudden there, there appears a vast army. Avengers! All around him, ready to do battle. Assemble. These were amazing warriors. You look to your left, you look to your right, and you're, you're said, let's go. That is what we have with God. An army ready, poised, with the strongest power to defend us, to help us, to protect us. And I know they were as close as, on your left, Captain. We just have to call on God. That night in Houston, that game, my husband had an angel army with him on that field. The prophet Isaiah says, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. I believe it. Jesus says, For those who love me and obey my commands, I will withhold no good thing. God's grace is available and waiting for us. I'm sharing tonight as a witness. I'm sharing as a cheerleader for the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Grace and peace be yours in abundance as you grow in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Savior. Amen. Amen. I would just leave you with this because music is so important to my faith experience and to how my heart grows closer to God. Please go listen to the song The Blessing by Carrie Job in Elevation Worship. It is Peter's verse over you. It is my encouragement, my cheerleading over you. The Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children